We greet you in the name of Christ for our, our weekly uh, time of devotion, and, and this is the season of Advent. So I'm going to first of all begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. But now I'm going to light the Advent wreath, which is always one of the fun things about the season of Advent. And as I think most of you know, Advent is a uh, countdown time toward Christmas, so this is the first week of Advent, so we light one of our four candles. And the other thing about Advent is it's blue. I love all the blue pyramids, and uh, it reminds us of a blue sky. And if you're like me on days, especially after it's been cloudy, and you get to see a blue sky, that brings a sense of hope. Everything is going to be okay. We have all these great songs. Blue skies, smiling at me, and uh, nothing but blue skies. And, and that is a good feeling to have that blue, that sense of hope. But it's interesting to me that we also say we sing the blues. And that means it's kind of sad uh, and plaintive. And we have a great Advent hymn to me that reflects all of that. It's called O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And if you know that hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, uh, it's kind of a plaintive tune in a minor key. So in a sense, it's kind of singing the blues. But I just want to explore that, that hymn a little bit today for our time of meditation. Um, o Come, O Come, Emmanuel has been sung in a plain chant form since the 8th century AD in monasteries. The, the days leading up to Christmas, they would sing something called the O Antiphons, or O Responses, where they'd say, O Emmanuel, O Dayspring from on high, O Ruler of the Nations, and so on, uh, come to us. And so the Church of Jesus has been singing those kinds of words for at least 1,200 years. Uh, somewhere in the 1500s, they got versified into the tune and the text that we know and sing today. Uh, but uh, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel is interesting to me because it is uh, just so blue in the way that it sounds, and, and the words are too, because it says, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here. Uh, exile, that's not a happy word. And if you think of the history of God's people, you know that, well, it was the year 586 B.C., where the Babylonians came into Israel's land, burned down their temple, took the cream of the crop and deported them to Babylon. And that's what the exile was. And it was a tough time for God's people because they were taken away from their homes. They were taken away from their culture. They had to adapt to Babylonian culture. They were taken away from their worship. The temple was burned down. They couldn't worship in the same thing. And everything was kind of turned upside down during the exile. And... Uh, I would just say that today, our pandemic days are kind of at exile too. We're taken away from the comfortable ways we have had for so long of doing things and have to do things differently. And I think all of us have our personal exiles of one sort or another. You know, I know of families that are estranged, you know, Parents don't talk to children. Brothers don't talk to sisters. And, and, and that's a kind of an exile that people have. I think people also have uh, inner exiles, you know. Uh, there is stuff going on in our lives and our relationships and our, and our ways of thinking and, and our problems that cause us to be exiled even from ourselves. Uh, we want to get away and not have to think about what's going on in our lives. So uh, the words to that hymn... O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here. I think those words apply to us. 
and in the main, they apply to the exile of sin. Uh, you recall the account from Genesis where Adam and Eve were in paradise and walked and talked with God, and then came the temptation and the fall, and they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. They were exiled because of sin. And I think that's an exile we all feel. How we long to be back to paradise, to be able to walk and talk in a perfect relationship with God. And, and, and sin has kind of destroyed that and put us into exile. There is, however, good news in the hymn. Uh, every verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel ends with these words. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. And even though the tune doesn't sound very rejoicing, the words are there, rejoice. And Emmanuel, that's one of those great Hebrew words that it simply means God with us. God is with us. So rejoice, God is with us. And he shall come to you, O Israel. And And Israel is just kind of code word for the people of God. Back then, old Israel, today, the church of Jesus is the new Israel. So even even in the midst of our exile, whatever that might be for you in your life, whether it's the pandemic or relationships or something else in your life, uh, we can rejoice because the promise is Emmanuel. God with us will come to you. In a sense, Jesus has come. That happened at Christmas. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. In a sense, it will happen. He's coming again uh, to judge the living and the dead, we say. But it is happening now, too. God is with us right now. He's with us in his word. Uh, He's with us in the people that he surrounds us with. He's with us right now in Jesus. So uh, it's a blue time in two ways. Uh, Blue because we mourn our exile, the exile of sin. Uh, So we sing the blues. But also blue in the sense of hope. The hope and the sure hope that we have in the coming of Jesus. So this Advent season, uh, may we take some time to reflect on Jesus Emmanuel, who has come, who is coming again, and who is with us now. Amen. Let's pray as we uh, do during these times. Oh God, uh, we do give you the highest praise. You are God who has made himself present with us in Jesus Christ, and we thank you for that. We pray also during the exiles that we experience in our lives that you come to us, especially during this pandemic time. Uh, We pray healing for those who are sick. We pray patience and strength for those who minister to them. We pray wisdom for, for all of us and for our leaders especially. And we do pray, Lord, that the vaccines that have been developed are proven to be effective and able to be shared with people. During this Advent season, Lord, we embrace the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. In his name we pray, amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, amen.